sometimes I have to do work on my own cars, and today it's no different. I have my 300 SL here, and it's got a problem. It's not a big problem, but it's something I'm going to need to deal with. Today I'm going to talk about hood-related issues and show you some of the things you can do to improve your hood operation, to fix uh, grill shell, hood star, hood pad, and so on. But take a look here. The other day I went to open the hood of this car and up it came and look what I found. It didn't look just like this, but I had a hood that was falling down and I took a hold of it and it just disintegrated. In fact, by the time I got totally done pulling the hood pad off, it was just in crumbled pieces. So we're going to start by talking about how you go about replacing a hood pad in an older Mercedes-Benz. Now that I think of it, last summer this hood pad was fine. I didn't notice any problem. But last week when I opened the hood, it was sagging right here in the middle. And I thought, yeah, I can fix that. I can go ahead and put some glue behind it and get it stuck back up to the hood. But as soon as I took a hold of it and pulled on it, it just deteriorated right in my hands. So the rot occurred, the final stage of rotting of this pad occurred over the last year, and it just totally fell apart. This is kind of typical of these old hood pads. They're subject to years of heat and age. You can see here, as I started to get the pad off, I decided to lay out a cloth. I would recommend using an old, you know, an old paint uh, piece of plastic, an old blank, or something to put over your engine compartment before you start scraping. And I prefer to use a plastic scraper to prevent scratching the paint on the inside of the hood. Most of the pad will come off by just pulling on it, but you'll get to these places where, they, where the use of excessive glue has got the pad really stuck to the hood. That's when you'll need to get in and use a scraper. When you're scraping off this glue, it's not necessary to get every little, you know, smudge of, of old foam off the hood because the hood pad has a lot of texture to it and it will not show when you glue the new pad to the underside of the hood. But you do need to get it clean of any large pieces like this here. Now, if you look closely, you can see these spray patterns. This hood's been replaced at some point. That's not factory glue there. And it looks like they just sprayed a spattering of glue all over the hood and it's not consistent. And that's probably one of the reasons why the hood glue let loose and the pad was sagging in the first place. So I'm going to show you some of the things we do to prevent this problem with our hood kits that we sell on our website. I've installed a lot of hood pads over the years, and I have to admit they all haven't been successful. I learned very quickly that not all glue is created equal. In fact, there are very few types of glues that really work well when installing a hood pad onto the inside of the steel hood here. Number one, it has to be a contact adhesive, which means you put the glue on both sides and when you put it together, it sticks. Now that creates a problem because if your hood pad isn't lined up properly and you put it on the hood, if you try to get it off, you're probably going to tear it. And the, the glue itself is the number one thing that you're going to need to be concerned about. If you don't use the right glue, that hood pad's going to fall off in a few years. I've tried all kinds of spray glues, spray adhesives, contact cements, and so on, and they never seem to work that well. So finally, when I, I got a hold of the right type of glue, we decided to package it ourselves and sell it with our hood pads. This is a very special type of contact adhesive that doesn't dry so fast. It allows you the time to move uh, the pad into place and get it secured to the hood. Uh, this glue, along with complete instructions, are included with our hood pad kits on our website. Let me show you an example of a hood pad I installed about five years ago on this 300 TD wagon using the Mercedes Source kit. If you look closely, you can see the pad is still glued nicely to the hood itself. It's still very smooth and none of the edges are letting loose. That's an example of a properly installed hood pad. While we're on the subject of hoods, there are a couple other things I want to point out that might be helpful to you. A couple of these are cosmetic in nature, and the others I'm going to mention are mechanical. The first is a hood star. Of course, the hood star is dear to us all. It's probably one of the reasons some of us drive Mercedes Benz. And these hood stars, they get damaged. People try to steal them, they try to pull them off, the spring loses fatigue, and they flop to the side. Um, and believe it or not, these hood stars are not expensive, but they can be troublesome to get on and off. 
particularly on the 123, 126, 201, and 124 chassis. So what I've done is I've written up an instruction sheet on how to properly get your old hood star off and get this new one on the hood. Uh, contrary to what you may have heard or seen, you do not remove this pin on the bottom of the star mechanism to get it on the hood. If you do, you'll never get it back together. The second thing I want to mention is uh, the grill shell itself. This is purely cosmetic, but I don't think there's anything nicer looking than a beautiful grill shell that has nice straight chrome strips and no breaks in the plastic. We have kits available where you can buy these individual chrome strips uh, and put them on yourself. It's not a difficult job. You do have to remove the grill shell from the hood and then pull these old strips off and install the new ones. These strips also come with our instructions. Next, I want to talk about preventative maintenance. I believe the number one neglected issue on hoods is lack of hinge lubrication. I'm going to repeat that, lack of hood hinge lubrication. Just recently, I purchased a 1986 300 SDL, and it had a broken hood hinge. And do you want to know why that broke? It was because it had no lubrication for years on these hinge points. One hinge point rusted tight, and with the stress of opening and closing the hood, it snapped that pin free. And this happens a lot. I've heard this from other customers as well. On the 123 chassis, the lower hinge attachment to the body will actually rust out and completely break off. And then you have a real problem because it's very difficult to weld down in that area on a 123 chassis. Now, what kind of lubrication? I've tried them all. I've tried engine oil, transmission fluid, I've tried spray grease, and some work, some don't work at all. The important thing is you need penetration, you need an oil, not a grease, that can get down into these hinge points, and you need a type of oil that will stay there, that won't just wash off the next time you hose down and, and rinse your car. I prefer to use synthetic rear end grease. 75, 90 weight, and I put it in a small oil can like this, and at least once a year, I lubricate every point on my hood hinges. Here I can show you in a little more detail how I lubricate the hinges on this 300 TD wagon. There's three points that pivot on these hinges. The top one, let that oil soak down into that pin area, then move to the center pin, lubricate both sides, and then the most critical is the pivot point down here connected to the inner fender panel. You'll have to get down in there and really let that soak. And while you're oiling that point, pay particular attention to this water drain here. You've heard me mention this numerous times on my website. This is a critical maintenance item on a 123 chassis. If these drains plug up, Water will raise up into this well here and accelerate rust on the hood hinges as well as battery box rust and rust out underneath the battery tray. I also lubricate the front latching mechanism on a regular basis. First I'll put a little bit of oil around this release pin here and then either side of the latch mechanism as well as the top of the catch itself. If you do this, it will help release the hood more smoothly. As I wrap this video up, there's one thing I forgot to mention, and that's the hood pull lever. Uh, this is a common item that breaks, and it breaks off right here. And when that breaks, you won't be able to get the hood all the way up. There's a couple things you can do. You can reach in there with a pair of really skinny long needle nose pliers and get a hold of the broken section. Or you can use a heavy wire, coat hanger wire, bend it, and push it through the grill screen to get a hold of the lever to release it, so then you can get the hood fully up. Once again, those hood pulls are less than $10, so if you have a hood pull that's looking old and fatigued, I would recommend you replace it before it breaks. I hope you enjoyed this video, and it's not over yet. There's one other issue we have to deal with, and that's hood release adjustment and emergency opening procedures. We'll cover that in a later video, so stay tuned, and thank you for watching.